Hello, I'm Eric Hanley, an automation specialist with es &E, and in this video segment we will cover timer configuration and ladder logic using CCW software. Timers inside of CCW are set up based on the IEC standards and are addressed differently than timers in Logic's software. Let's go through two different ways that you can set up a timer by creating a flashing circuit. Let's use a motor starter coil to enable the flashing circuit. We will start by adding direct contacts or an examine if closed instruction. Then we will select the IO tab in the variable selector pop-up window and we are going to select output zero. Now we need to add the timer and you can select it from the timer slash counter folder or you can use the search function to look up the instruction. Next, we will drag and drop the timer into our rung after the XIC and you can see that it creates the tag name for you automatically. You can change that tag name if you would like to make it more descriptive. The timer instruction has similar parts to what we're used to because we have the PT or preset time the ET or elapsed time, and then you have the qubit for timer done. The qubit conforms to the IEC 1131 standards for PLC programming environments. Many people are used to the DN or done bit, but the DN and the qubit are equivalent. The preset and elapsed time are where this instruction differs from Logic's software. In CCW, PT and ET both have a time data type that have a specific syntax that starts with a T and then a pound or hashtag symbol. Then it is followed by the number and units. For example, if you want three seconds, then you put three S and say we want three and a half seconds, you would add 500 MS to the end. If you want to see all the options, then select the instruction and hit the F1 key to bring up the help viewer. Help gives you the detailed description as well as all the parameter data for the particular instruction. It also shows what it would look like in all the editors that can use that instruction. We want the syntax for PT and ET, so we need to click on the link for time data type. And this opens a new window and covers all of your syntax options. This is one way to set up a preset with a hard-coded value. If you want to be able to change the timer preset from an HMI, or if you need to move different values into the same timer preset, then we have to make it a modifiable tag value. To do that, we need to add another timer instruction and another rung. In CCW, we have the instruction block, which shows you all possible instructions. We will add the block and it will open the selector options. Then you can use the search for any to time and this allows us to take a tag value and convert it into the time data type which is required for PT and ET. In Logic software the instructions automatically convert the data format to the required output type of that instruction but in CCW we do not have that, so that is why the conversion instructions exist. They all start with any underscore two, which makes it slightly easier to find them though. Now that we have added the conversion instruction, we need to right click on the select variables selector, then move to the global variable tab. We don't want to use the local variables because they cannot be addressed from the HMI. Once on the global variable, we can then create a new tag called timer on preset or ton underscore preset and then change the data type to dent or double integer. This will give us the tag that the HMI can write to in order to change the timer preset. Now we need to create the tag that we will use for the preset timer. Start by selecting variable selector and go back to the global values tab. Now, notice that it is not showing the tag that we just created. One of the features of CCW is it doesn't show you the tags of other data types until you click the first row that is blank. Our new tag will be timer preset use, 
or ton underscore pt underscore use. And then we need to change the data type to time. Now you can copy the tag and select the preset and paste. Let's add one more rung to our flashing circuit. The logic we need to add is if timer one is done and timer two is not done, turn on output one. That will complete our timer setup as well as our flashing circuit. Thanks for watching and if you have any questions, please contact your local ES&E account manager or automation specialist.